Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Schamberger. I'm a PhD student at the Technical University of Munich and I'm going to give this talk about our paper A Power Side Channel Attack on the Reed Muller Reed Solomon version of the HQC crypto system. This is joint work together with Lukas Holzbauer, Julian Renner, Antonia Wachterzi and Georg Siegel. I will first introduce you to side channel attacks. So in the black box model, we as an attacker can only observe the input and the output of an algorithm executed on a device. Nevertheless, an attacker can also observe a so-called side channel of the device, which means an attacker can observe the execution time of the algorithm running on a device or the power consumption of the device. He can do this either in by directly having the, uh, observing the power consumption or um, capturing the electromagnetic emanation of the device. And if these informations are dependent on the secret processed in the device, an attack can be mounted. In our setting, we talk about profiled side channel attacks, where we build templates of the real power consumption of the device. We do these templates for all the intermediates or the classes that we want to distinguish. And then we can, in a second step, match these templates to one attack trace. In the profiling phase, we assume a known secret or known um, executed value inside the algorithm. We build all our templates and then in the attack phase we observe our attack trace where we don't know the secret or the class that we want to compute compared to the attack trace to all the templates and the best matching templates gives us the value or the class that we are looking for. Let me introduce you to the um, algorithm that we are going to attack. It's the Hemi Quasi Cyclic, the HQC algorithm. It is a code-based key encapsulation mechanism, a so-called CAM. It is also a fourth-round alternative candidate in a NIST PQ contest. Here you see the PKE version of the algorithm, where we have an encryption and a decryption. HQC is based on a concatenation of two error-correcting codes, which are here abstracted as encode and decode. For encryption, we first sample some polynomials of small hemming weight and compute the first part of ciphertext U and then we encode our message with our code combination, add some error onto it and this is now our ciphertext. It, during the decryption we use our ciphertext, multiply U with our, uh, U with our Y, subtract it from V, put it into the decoder and then we, after decoding, get our message back. This works as with the knowledge of Y, we reduce the amount of errors in V such that the decoder again can decode. If we don't know why, the error is too high and decoding fails. I've shown you the PKE version of HQC and these PKE versions are vulnerable to so-called chosen ciphertext attacks. These attacks work by letting you um, submit a certain ciphertext to the algorithm, observe the decryption result then adapt on this decryption result and from that iteratively let you um, infer the secret used in the decryption. A countermeasure against this is called the so-called Fujisaki Okamoto transformation and this acts as a countermeasure and gives you a chosen ciphertext secure CCA2 secure key encapsulation mechanism. This is a simplified version of this Uchisaki Okamoto transformation to give you the concept. First, um, the key concept here is that for a chosen ciphertext attack, you have to um, query the decryption with invalid ciphertext. And the idea of the FO transformation is that after decryption, you re-encrypt your message M, get a new ciphertext out of it, and then you compare the input ciphertext with the re-encrypted ciphertext and if these two ciphertexts are <coughs> sorry, equal, then you're able to release your result, otherwise you are bored. And this lets the attacker not query for chosen ciphertext attacks because you can only enter valid ciphertext. How does this look like for the HQC cam? In the first part, you can see the decryption, and in the second part, you can see the encryption here. 
um, for decryption, you enter your ciphertext, secret key polynomial, you then decode to your message M, and this M then gets re-encoded in order to have a deterministic re-encryption, we need to have the same uh, seed for the sampler here to generate the same uh, random polynomials. This is done by um, receiving the seed from this hash function G directly from our re uh, decrypted message. Here in the end, we can compare and then we release our shared secret or we abort the decapsulation. This talk is about side channel attacks. So this is all secure if we are in a black box model, but if there are side channel attacks, one can think of, we don't need the result here in the output, but we need, we can just observe some side channel that gives us also information about this, about the Y depending on our input here. And here is a picture of the our attack target and also related work, which parts of this um, decapsulation is attacked. In our at work, we attack the decoder here with a power side channel attack seen here by this lightning bolt. And the two other works are from Unio et al, which show an attack using this uh, hash function here which was um, published as Chess 2022, and a second attack by, from Chess 2022 by Guo et al, which observe that here um, the sampling of the random polynomials uses rejection sampling, and there's a timing side channel in this rejection sampler. Um, for a chosen cipher text attack, we need two attack components. And since these attack components are kind of dependent in, on each other, I have to make them clear. So we need the attack strategy, and with the attack strategy, we need to know how to find inputs with an observable oracle result based on the secret. So our inputs must have an effect that we can observe through our oracle. And we have the side channel oracle. This oracle gives us, shows us um, a classification result that we need in the attack strategy. It can be that for an attack strategy, we find different side channel oracles, or for different oracles, or for the same oracle, we find several attack strategies. So just that these two are interlinked and there can be different attack strategies and different oracles for each other. To understand the attack, I have to recall the HQC parameters. So I told you that HQC is a combination of two error correcting codes. And the current version of HQC, the third round, after the third round, or beginning with the third round, uses a shortened Reed Solomon code in combination with a duplicated Reed Muller code. We are interested in our secret key polynomial Y, and that means we deal with polynomials of size n in HQC, and our Y is a polynomial of this size, which has a certain Hemming weight for the smallest HQC parameters at 66. So this Y is very sparse. I plotted the Y here in this graph. What you can see, a large part of this Y consists of our uh, code combination of size n1 and 2, which we call Y0. And we have a small part, which then consists of the remaining few <coughs> entries of n. Our attack is able to um, attack Y0, but the probability of um, the support of Y being in this Y1 is very small. And also in the paper, we show solutions for this problem. But um, I will not go more into detail in this talk. So what is also interesting is that we can see, so we have a code combination and during decoding, we first decode the read Mahler code and then the result is decoded as with the read Solomon code. So we can see this Y0 adds different blocks of read Mahler code or inputs to the read Mahler code of size N2. Please note also that previous versions of HQC up to the third version, so first and second version, 
use a repetition code in combination with a shortened BCH code. Let me introduce you to the general attack idea. So we are interested in Y, I showed you how Y looks like. And if you think about setting U to one, we can see that our if Y is a code word of the combined code, Y acts as an error on this code word. And then we decode this. So we, our goal is to find um, the support of Y. We only need the support because it's very sparse. And we are going to attack each of the readmala blocks in this Y here, in this Y0 here separately. And we assume that the decoding results of one of these readmala blocks gives us information for useful for the attack. And for that, we need an additional oracle. And I'm going to introduce you later which of these oracles we can use. So what are the steps of the attack? <coughs> I told you we set C, so C such that U is the all zero polynomial. And we choose V in the sense that the resulting input to the decoder, this V prime here, is exactly at the decoder boundary. Meaning that if we have to add an additional error, the decoding fail, fall, uh, fails or decodes to another code word. And if we reduce one error, we can definitely decode. And if we have that, we can then test each individual bit of Y of this Y. If the decoding fails or decodes to something else, or if the decoding decodes to the same code word. And with that, we can iteratively test all the bits and then we know which of them contain an error since they are already set. This brings us to our first contribution of the paper. We observed that um, power side channel attack from Uni et al. published at Chess 2022 is not working. And this is the case as um, they make use of an attack by Bateo et al. which consists of a plain text checking Oracle. But um, this was published for the second round version of HQC. And there's a problem. This attack strategy is only valid in the bounded distance decoder case. And for our Readmala codes of the third round version, those are decoded using a maximum likelihood approach. Therefore, the decoding result does not only depend on the number of errors, but also on the support. So it can be that even though we reduce the amount of errors, we still decode to another code word. Small um, visualization here. On the left hand side, we have our bounded distance decoder with the distinct decoding spheres. And here we have our ML decoder where we see that the whole space here, that um, resulting inputs to the decoder, and the whole space get decoded to a certain code word. And this uh, introduces the um, dependency on the support. We found that the strategy does not work in anymore. We show a counterexample in the paper. And we also simulated the attack with ideal decoder results of the reference implementation. And we came to the conclusion that this strategy does not work. So we propose a valid attack strategy, even in the presence of an ML decoder. And our attack is based on what we call a close to zero oracle. This means we, our attack is based on a side channel oracle that returns us true if the decoder, if the Readmala decoder of a certain block decodes to the all zero code word, if it decodes to something else, it returns false. And based on this oracle, we um, propose an attack, an attack strategy that works even in the presence of an ML decoder. And we do this by um, observing the support of RM code words and then building our queries for the attack strategy such, such that the Oracle result is always valid depending on E. This means we um, avoid cases where the support has and in, yeah, has an influence on our attack result. And yeah, we always um, get varied results of this close to zero oracle. And also there's no, no ties possible in the decoder. 
And with that, this allows us to follow the general attack strategy, even in the presence of an ML decoder. We show a proof in the paper with this um, restriction, but this um, restriction, so the, the attack is valid with a very high probability for the HQC parameter sets, since um, we uh, simulated the hemming weight of the maximum hemming weight of blocks and we had a maximum hemming weight of 9 for 99.9% .9 of all keys that we simulated and this number here is 40, 48 so there's a lot of margin here left. Also we again verified our tech strategy with perfect oracle calls from the decoder again we used the decoder of the reference implementation. In addition, we show how to use partial information from our tech with information set decoding such that we get a reduction in the security level. How can we um, obtain or what are reasons why we obtain partial information of why? This can be due, due to the that the amount of Oracle calls is limited, so we can just observe a certain amount of side channel traces of the device, or we don't have um, perfect Oracle answers. And what we show here is a modi variant, modified variant of the Sterns algorithm, which is information set decoding, where we feed in our partial attack results and based on the amount of known ones and the support of Y, we then give um, the work factor, resulting work factor. A short comparison with related work. Our strategy requires a maximum amount of oracles, which is based on the amount of blocks of the RS decoder. So we have to do this for each block, RM block. And this is the amount of um, calls that we need for a strategy for one block, maximum amount. We've seen that the attack by Unio at all is not working, so we cannot really compare with this one but we can, appear, can compare with the um, timing side channel attack by Gui et al. And um, Gui et al shows a non-deterministic timing attack. There they follow also this general attack strategy by finding an uh, input an, at the decoder boundary, but uh, they don't have a strategy like us where we um, take into account uh, the read mal, uh, the support distribution of the read maler. Um, code words, but they randomly increase the hemming weight such that the uh, sometimes they hit the decoder boundary. And therefore, they test only this um, points in the in the uh, input to the RM decoder found during this random process. And therefore, this has to be repeated several times until each precision in Y is evaluated. And in addition, there is some small uncertainty of the timing oracle, and this requires to do this. <coughs> Please excuse me. To do this for, um, yeah, multiple times until a majority threshold is reached. Here in this table, you can see the required oracle calls for this is the um, row excuse me, the column where we show our attack results. So we have to do this for each block. And these are the numbers for our attack. So the Ritmala code for HQC 192 and 256 is the same. Therefore, we just need the same for these both values here. And this is the published or the, the amount of Oracle calls in their paper. We they, they only give the median, but we then um, divide this median to the blocks. So take this with a grain of salt. And to be fair, we also um, identified that their attack strategy can all also be used with our um, decoding oracle. And we simulated this also with the um, ideal um, oracle results. And we see that this is quite an overhead to our attack strategy. Now let me introduce you to the side channel targets that we can use to build our close to zero oracle. To remember, the oracle has to distinguish between the read Muller decoder returning the all zero code word or some other code word. We can directly 
um, attack the decoder in this step through a power side channel, which is the main attack target of our paper. We also discussed that we can use the power side channel attack on this hash function, the shake256, here used to generate the seed for the sampler. Nevertheless, we cannot use the timing side channel on the sampler, as this timing side channel requires a certain seed that gives observable timing differences in the timing side channel. And our attack setting does not allow, it, allow um, a seat in this form and therefore it does not work. The power side channel on the Ritz-Solomon decoder works in the following. It is an adaption of the attack on the BCH decoder that we published in 2020 at the CARDIS conference. It is directly applicable also to an um, RS decoder since an BCH code is a subcode of an RS code and therefore the decoder is very similar. It works to distinguish these two classes as if the read Muller decoder returns your zero code word. Also the resulting read Solomon code word is all zero and this is a valid code word for the read Solomon decoder. If the decoder returns anything else, then the read Solomon decoder in the second step has then to correct an error. This is distinguishable to the side channel attack. We show attack results for the latest HKC 128 reference implementation on a Cortex M4 microcontroller and with 1000 template traces. So we need 1000 traces to build the templates in the profiling phase. We can correctly classify 100,000 attack traces, which is more than enough that we need for our attack strategy. The attack target of this power side channel is the error locator polynomial computation dur during the RS decoding process. And here you can see a t-test evaluation of the two classes where either the Reed solomon decoder does not have to correct an error since it's just um, computing the all zero code word or yeah, the input is the all zero code word and there nothing is to be corrected. And some data code words where the RS decoder has to correct an error. We can see that there's quite some exploitable leakage in this computation. We can also use the power side channel on this shake256 hash function as published by Uno et al. This is the case as the side channel oracle is independent of the attack strategy. The authors identify that if it is possible to have a changing m dependent on y, this directly influences the computation of the hash here and also the seed and then the whole recomputation. So this is quite, quite a large side channel difference. So what has to be done? This attack is called a plain text checking oracle and we target the shake256 during uh, the re-encryption. And as already been said, decoding result M prime directly influences this computation. The oracle is evaluated by the authors on the same attack target that we used, even on the same side channel platform. They used a Shake software implementation of PQM4, which is the go-to um, repository for implementations tailored for the Cortex-M4. They used a machine learning classifier for the evaluation. Um, they used a so-called convolutional neural network, and they achieved a quite high accuracy for 10,000 attack traces. The attack needs a small adaption to be usable with our attack, since with our attack, we only target one read Muller block at once, and with that, the message M never changes. Nevertheless, we can um, set this amount of blocks of Y0 to contain an error, and then our attacked block 
influences the resulting M and we again have our oracle. Let me give a quick conclusion of our talk. First we have to state that updated versions of HQC require new attack strategies, so HQC has updated the error correction to read the Muller and read Solomon codes. We show that the read Muller codes are decoded through an ML decoder. This breaks the attack assumption from Unio et al. Given that we show a proven new attack strategy through our close to zero oracle and we show different possibilities to build such an oracle in practice, we show that we can directly uh, attack the RS decoder during decryption or we can attack uh, the shake 256 that generates the randomness for the used sampler. The timing side channel using rejection sampling, uh, sampling is not usable. In addition, we showed um, how to use information set decoding results per partially retrieved keys and we show practical side channel results of the HQC 128's referent implementation. This is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. And here are my contact details.